dungeon yeah. after finally a successful night. Yeah. Um, and in honor of that success, something we're going to try to do from the future is have uh, special drinks that we make. Fancy. So this is the Oozing Goblin. Huh. Um, uh, it is very tasty, and we'll have the recipe up on our Patreon for our Patreon backers. That actually is mm. a lot better than I expected. You can really taste the goblin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. All the, the ooze factor. The little bits of no bark. No wonder Zyla was like, ah, <laughs> let me catch all the ooze I can. Good job, Zyla. Who knew? Who knew all you have to do is find a cursed goblin, cut him open, and drink his yeah. juices? <laughs> this is, I think, this is why any good adventurer actually carries an empty flask or an empty wine skin. Mm -hmm. Well, know, not you. You're, yeah, you're, we've yeah, seen a, what a you've done with your wine bit, skin. But, at least mm -hmm. you looked. All right, so we are um, currently. You guys are heading out of the dungeon. Zoom in and out. Um. So what did you guys want to do? We were gonna head out. I'm pretty sure we were just wanting to get out of here. And we were wanting to go to town. Uh, you know, we're turned back to the um, the guard tower where. They kind of sent us off on this uh, mission. Kind of let them know what we found and uh, hopefully, you know, spruce up uh, our armor a little bit. Buy a little bit. Yeah, Check spend, some, of spend some of this cold hard yeah. cash that we've uh, come across. <laughs> All right, and now did, did Bergamot, you said that you wanted to. Well, I feel like I'm feeling extra proud about uh, I feel like we've accomplished something you know we, we set out on our first mission together we we didn't have the best of luck but we we got to a really good point here and now that we're gonna take these goods back to town I want to kind of like I want to send a message out uh, I don't feel like we're just the people that went out killed the goblins and are coming back this this isn't over you know we know that that goblin general chief Chieftain Terrigrin. Uh, um, Tristan Terrigrin. Yeah, he got away, and I'll bet we'll see him again, or at least we'll hear his name again. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, let's send a message to him. Like he made big demands of us. Let's turn that back around. I want to I want to either topple this tower or I want to burn it down as we leave to send a message. Um, All right. So I know that's a really big deal, but. There's nothing in this tower that we want, and we yeah. don't, I don't... Except for spiders. Rats. Spiders and rats. They all make good fuel. But if the spiders start pouring out when we burn the tower down, well, once what we are we going to do? Fires, once we set the fires, we could hop in that river, which moves very swiftly, and just get on out of there quicker than the, the mm. spiders or any remaining is, goblins could come out after us. Is that going to take us towards town? Uh, I don't know that. I was just thinking to get away from the tower. I think so. Um, the trick would be is if you guys came out um, of oh, the tower, out of the tower, or are we still in it? No, I'm. I'm I, I just went ahead and moved you guys out. You guys tell me what you're doing. We don't really have maps for a lot of this, so we're going to probably have to play theater of the mind with a, with yeah. a lot of it. Um, okay. So, I will say that uh, you could probably pile up all the stuff in these caves and start them on fire. Um, the chance of you like actually lighting the the uh, the caves on fire themselves are pretty slim. I mean, I guess if you started stuff on fire, like all the rafters that they build holding yeah. things up would yeah. slowly collapse. Oops. Would cave oh, it wait in. a minute! The whole thing's made of stone, isn't it, or is it not? There has to be wooden beams and all. Because I remember distinctly you saying that we were safe because so. it's. Fireproof because we're, we're in a stone room. No, that was in those rooms. It will yes. not burn. But I'm thinking of the main hallways and everything. Fire will damage. I know in caves in general, fire causes caving. So um, I would say. We should at least try. You yeah. guys can do it. Um, you wouldn't be able to collapse the whole tower, but you could make it less habitable. Um, you could really wreck the caves down below. So. I want to take the throne and that tree and throw them in a pile and use those for kindling. Wait, could you guys shoot magic missiles at the tower and like just... They're not that strong. No. We could help bring the roof down a little bit because we know the roof was already coming in. Those walls were pretty strong. The roof. Yeah, shooting... The roof. Shooting a wall with a mage bolt would be like shooting like the side of a brick house with an arrow. 
Like, mm -hmm. you'd have to be a really good shot. Uh, yeah, I mean, if we set r the rafters and stuff on fire, that at least uh, makes it hard to keep that place uh, structurally sound, so. So let's say um, we're gonna roll a little bit of luck here, but also um, you guys give me, roll a d20 and add either your wisdom modifier or your intelligence modifier, and that will, how well you roll is how well you guys got everything set up kindling-wise to get this thing going. Okay. 19 for me. 18. Seven. All right, so um, everyone, even Dodden's helpful. Um, uh, Ada, yeah. uh, I'm um, spent. I had to heal you guys. I had to heal myself. But, um, I'm spent. Soon there, there is fire coming out of of all the all the holes. All the holes have fire coming out. <laughs> um, the roof collapses in. Part of the inner wall collapses, um, and to the east. Uh, you guys see down, because it's up on top of a hill there, mm -hmm. down the hill you see smoke coming up from something over in that area. Like uh, like it's an exit. Yep. Um, I like it. And uh, you guys give me an awareness check. All right. 15 for Ada. 18. Okay. Uh, 15. All right. So the smoke keeps pouring out, and then you guys are are done with the tower. All right. I, um, one of the things I was thinking is that the smoke would, um, I know that it's going to be noticeable and that it's possible that the goblins will see it, but I also feel that the elves could see this, any humans around could see this. This is, this is sending a message. Plus, it might be so distracting that nobody will try to attack us while we're heading back to town. Because they'll be worried about this tower. I think. All right. So, um... So as you guys are uh, getting ready to go, uh, Dodden's going to travel with you. Woo! Um, a, a giant, you see a giant blur drop down out of the trees uh, right on top of Ada. Oh, you guys. You guys. Guys. Zyla's like freaking out, like, is it a spider? Did I just see a spider out of the corner of my eye? So, um, it hits you and does five points of damage as it bites into your shoulder. Bites? Yes. Ah. It also, um, it is huge. Mm. We don't see anything yet. Zyla's just gonna close her eyes. So she doesn't see if it's a spider. No, you don't. No. You don't get to close your eyes <laughs> for this one. Um, so uh, I need Ada to roll a um, a fortitude save. Do I get um, four plus? Okay, so nineteen. So nineteen. All right. Um, there. Uh, its fangs pull out of you, and you see two trickles of yellow come out of the wound, but uh, but you don't feel sick. Uh, and then, Zyla, give me a uh, sanity check. Because a giant spider just dropped down one of your fears. I told you I had my eyes closed! <laughs> I just saw a blur, and then I closed my eyes instantly. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, what's the zero zero? I guess 30. That's one, right? That's just a three? Is it just a three? Then? Yeah. Yep, that's just a three. Okay. 
Yeah, because um, mm. to get mm. the hundred, you have to be like zero, zero, like barely, right? And ten. Yeah. Yeah. So zero, zero, and zero is on. Mm. Well, so. I'm I'm feeling so much pride from just having taken the, down these goblins and like figured out our mission, and I'm like. Oh. But that was its uh, Ooh, these sneak attack, uh, or its uh, surprise attack on you guys. So now everyone roll initiative. Whoop, whoop. Okay. Zyla has 18. Ada is at 14. Okay, one moment. There's no number of them right here. Oh, right here. Alright. Ada, what'd you roll? 15. 15. Zyla, what'd you roll? 18. Bergamot, what'd you roll? 11. 11. I may have actually done a 14. No, but I set it back down. That's 15. I may have been 15 or 14. Whatever. Uh, well, the spider rolled a 5, so all of you guys go Woo! first. Woo! Fuck you, spider! All right, Zyla, you're up first. <clears throat> How close is it? Can I? Uh, it's right there. Can I shoot there. my short bow? You could shoot yeah. your short bow at it. Um, I mean, sure. Is anyone singing right now? Uh, no, he hasn't had a turn. I didn't, get in before. I didn't get in before the action. If I had started singing while it was biting Ada, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what you do when like a giant spider comes out of the thing. <laughs> so, right? Is that what you do? That's not how Bergamot sounds. Okay. So if I moved behind it, could I still... Um, use my thing without getting. What, could I still use my short bow without no. giving it? An if you go within bow? melee range, then okay. It, okay. It's, um, it's gonna mess with your sanity and stuff like that. Like you should stay all right at the distance uh, and just do the short bow. Yeah, yeah. Fifteen. Um. Um, that hits. Yes. Okay. Six. Six points of damage. Nice. Woo awesome. Right, Way to go. Max number. The arrow s sinks into its abdomen and disappears. <gasps> Ada, it's your luck turn. Finding that. Um, the magical spider? No, I'm saying that you oh. shot it so well it went in, and sunk in. It's a big spider. So I can't use it. I can't use a zero mana um, spell as a tag. Correct. Okay. Um, can I uh, step a little bit out of range um, and shoot uh, wild magic at it? Yes. So now, when when we were talking about attacks of opportunity, wild magic is not considered a. Um, a spell because it's an ability, so like it wouldn't provoke an attack of opportunity. Okay. Um, so you could stay there or you could step back and attack. I want to step back just so that I'm a little bit more out of its range. Okay. Um, so I've moved myself. Um, so I roll a hit. Wait, does Dodden actually have any weapons? I don't think he does. He has a staff. So, I rolled an 11. Oh, wait. Uh, range touch with a plus 2 to roll. Right? So, that's 14. 13. 13. Apparently, I can't 13. do math. And its touch is 13, so that hits. Roll yes. damage. Good. Sorry, I can't do math already. So, uh, three, four points of damage. Woo! All right. Um, your bolt of energy hits it, uh, burning one of its legs, and the leg falls off. Woo! We're going to roast that one up tonight. Mm. <laughs> um, Jesus. We're going to have a spider, spider roll. Raises, raises his staff empty. and screams, You're no longer my boss! And runs up and swings his staff. Ah! Dotted! <laughs> I knew you had it in you! <laughs> and. I don't 
know what Dodden's attack bonus is. Let's see, he has a strength of 12, max of 2, 15. <laughs> and he hits with his staff. Woo! Woo! Go Dodden. He graces off a couple hairs. And does three points of damage, nice, smushing buddy. out one of its little eyes. Aww. Yeah. Just the little eyes. Just one of the little eyes. <laughs> okay. All right, Bergamot, it is your turn. Okay, that spider's got poor peripheral vision on the side Dodden's on, just so you know. So you can tell that this is that this spider is is pretty battered. So, um, like battered, fried? No. So so that's something uh, I think Fourth Edition did, and I just sort of like it as a way to describe. Instead of me giving you numbers, um, there is uh, <laughs> bloodied. Bloodied means it's that's like about half right down. Itself. Battered means mm -hmm. it's like down to about a quarter. So it's just a way to describe so that way you guys know like, oh, this thing is really like damaged. Well, we do have a nice fire going over in the tower and some uh, batter roasted spider might be really nice around now. Uh, I will shoot with my crossbow. <clears throat> All right. And I forgot to sing. Uh, so that is just 11. Does it take an action for him to? Yes. No. Um, yeah, that would be my thing. So 11, a, a so your bow, the, the bolt flies over the, the, uh, spider's head. Mm -hmm. Um, it turns and jumps towards Ada ah! and attacks. It does, uh. So that hits. Its fangs sink into your shoulder again. Not again. That does one point of damage. Same spot. Um, no, the other shoulder. Uh, and give me another fortitude check, please. So I only need to do a sanity check the first time. I, I got a 23 yep. fortitude. All right. It does not uh, poison you. So next up is Xyla. Alright, I'm shooting it with my bow again. Wait, hold on. Let me look at that. Oh, that would be a six. I don't think it's six. No, it does not. So, um, I think I've been reading this wrong a little bit. You know, wild magic. I forgot I leveled up. Um, it gains 1d4 in power every two levels. Since we're at level two, I get a roll. Two, 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 two. No. Oh. Every two levels. So first level is 1d4, at third level, oh. and then at fifth okay. level. So I, w I could have been hopeful, you know. We're at level two. Okay. So I guess I am going to take a step back again and um, shoot wild magic at it. All right. Mm -hmm. so I got nine. Nine? Nope. Uh, it arcs over its head and misses as well. Mm. Uh, Dodden runs up behind. Dodden. <laughs> this is Dodden's fight, really. This is proving his worth to be in the gang. Yep. And yeah. swings and misses. No! You just You're out, Dutton. You're out. Bergamot, it's your turn. Yeah, Bergamot's out. I'm going to sing a song about uh, how Berg about how Dodden has to uh, really wow us. Otherwise, uh, he's just not going to be cool in our eyes. What is with you against Dodden? What did he ever to... do to you? He's done nothing to you. All right, so that means that everyone now gets plus one because uh, That's true. of Thanks Bergamot for the song, singing. Bro. We do need to make special plus one, like, cards, I think. Well, I made one well, for I me that, that has my countdown if I stop singing. I'll make one of these for everybody, but then you need, like, just use a die or something to, like, count down. <clears throat> what about a jelly bean? You can do that, right. but um, and those aren't going to The last. spider I'll eat it uh, turns to attack Dodd. No! I'm not our buddy! And it's... <gasps> All of them. Are we gonna have to drag him back into town? We haven't hit him with anything. 
and it sinks into his leg. Buddy, no! And then he has to do a check, and he makes his fortitude save. Xyla, it's your turn. Taking it down with his crossbow. Not really. Short, short bow. Here we go. Fifteen. That hits. That hit. Roll damage. Four. Five. Yeah, no, sorry, four. <laughs> four. That's all the little plus ones. Four. All the plus ones. Yeah. All right, um, the arrow sinks into its backside, and it, its legs curl up, and it falls over on its back. Dead? Yes. I'm going to retrieve that arrow, by the way. Which one? The one that's You're going to walk up to a spider and take your arrow out? Well, hey, um, Bergamot, do you think you could pull that arrow out for me? <laughs> you got it. That's not a thing. You mean this arrow right here? Yeah. Could you get that one that's embedded in him too? Nope. Uh, <laughs> I go retrieve sorry, the one both, that missed. Both of the arrows are broken. What? Oh. You were that like that much power. I mean, yeah. Hey, uh, Dodden, thanks for that help. That was some good work, buddy. Mm -hmm. I do what I can. <laughs> Alright. Now we gotta head back to town and does Dodden Dodden, do you feel comfortable? coming back to town with us now that we've kind of disguised you as a ugly little elfling well I think we should like we need to do our own like checks or something to see if he passes as an elfling you know as far as do we have enough can we do a check to see do we have enough stuff that we that we think that he is passable I don't know what what clothes we had to give him it was just uh, Zyla's cloak <coughs> Um, so the first question is, where do you guys want to go to first? You keep saying back to town. Do you want to stop by Farmer Vicks? Do you want to go straight to Guard Burger? Uh, do you well, want to? Well, we passed Farmer Vicks on the way there, yeah. so we may as well stop and see if maybe he can regenerate whatever uh, necklace pouch things we've. Uh, when well, we can give him some cabbages and stuff. Yeah, we can give him cabbages. Yeah. See if he ever married that pretty squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> In the wait, how long have we been gone? I don't know. Like two days. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we'll say that you guys make it back in. No, it's been. We could probably rest at like his three house. Three or four too. days from his house, yeah. and then all the yeah. stuff that you we guys went through. Like so a, we rest yeah. at night. It's been like a week because we maybe met the elves more. in between Vic's house yeah, and that's true. Tower. Um, so we'll say that uh, that it's. Uh, pretty quiet journey. Uh, you guys don't run into anything uh, on the way to Vix. Um, Farmer Vic is very excited when you bring him some cabbages. Woo! Cabbages. Um, Does he want us to stay for he, dinner? <laughs> yes, he'll invite you in for dinner, and he is actually very interested in this little gremlin that's with you. He doesn't seem freaked out at all. Um, and what does the gremlin think of Vic? Dodden is just sort of quiet, taking it all in. Um, so, uh, Vic cooks some food for you guys, uh, and he even pulls out some of his old clothes from when he was a kid, and dresses up Dodden a little bit more, and with the hood up and then a scarf across Dodden's face. Oh, so nice of him. Thanks, Vic. Oh. I thought you were gonna say he like glued a fake beard on. Yeah, I was gonna stuff. say like no. a little squirrel, squirrel yeah. mustache. Yeah. You know? I thought you were gonna say like you know he dressed him up as like a girl or something like you know did a Bugs Bunny with him. <laughs> That's one ugly little girl. So um, unless there's anything else that you want specifically from Farmer Vic. Um, um, I mean, I'm going to thank him for his hospitality. Um, yeah. I feel like we should probably rest with him so that we can gain back our hit points and stuff like that. Well, at this point, you guys figure it's been three days since okay, so you left, so you would have healed up everybody. We'll just okay. say that everyone will be back up to full. Okay. Can we um, now, thank, I want to thank Vic for the necklaces that he gave us yeah. and how much of a help they were to us. Yeah. Um, 
I had taken um, like that temporary damage to my strength. Um, I think when it was a spider bite or something, would I have gained that mm, back? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. How how long have we been gone? You said about a week or two weeks. Two weeks. Did you say two? Weeks? Yeah. Okay. At this point, about two weeks. Okay. Um, all right, from there, it's, it's I think, a day, day and a half to, um... Um, does Dodden recognize any of the writing that was on Farmer uh, Vic's walls and stuff yeah, like there's that? there's runes everywhere. No, I mean, okay. it's magical inscription. If you maybe spent a couple weeks here, you could maybe start deciphering okay. it. Um, I sketched but some it's not them. goblin or anything. Yeah. I've got them. We've, we, we've got them with us. I sketched them when the first That's time right. we came through. Okay. Well then, um, let's uh, head back to the guard tower. Um, I feel like maybe one of us should, like maybe the more charismatic ones should um, go talk to the guard. Um, Dot and I are probably gonna stay back a little bit. A uh, you know, yeah. and both have our scarves up, pretend that we're like you know just sleepy or something. Yeah, Dot does not need to be uh, guard for. All right, um, so we'll figure out what, so you two, you're walking up, and as you walk up, Guard Burger uh, is sitting outside of the tower. Um, I can't remember if it's, what's that? Do you want a beer? Yeah. Oh, you don't have a beer in here. Okay. That's fine. Oh, never mind. You can go get a beer out of the fridge. Um, but, uh, uh, he waves, he's like, ah, you've returned. And is that bags of food? Yes. And yes. You're yes, it back. is. Oh, yeah. I'm not here. We, um, Hold on one second. I'll, uh, found out who was, um, stealing all of the crops and slaughtering all of the farm animals. And we dealt with the situation. We... Was it bandits? It's goblins. What? Yep. Like, like small green things. Goblins with making demands. Spider goblins. Spider goblins. Spider goblins. Spider goblins. Is Ada's growing her voice again? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, spider. So it's not just green goblins. It's goblins that are made out of spiders. All right. Let me <laughs> let me step up and help out with this one. All right, Burger. Hey. I'm Bergamot. You remember we had similar names? Uh, I do now. Groovy. <laughs> Alright. Now, let me show you this necklace I made. Now, I just made this. You can see it's still a little funky. But it is funky when it comes to helping tell this story. We killed a lot of spiders and a lot of gremlins. Or goblins or gremlins. Gremlins! I think this necklace kind of shows these are some funky teeth from some funky dudes that we took down. We got some sacks of veggies that belongs to all the folks in this town. We managed to meet some bad guys. We took care of them and we handled the business. And if you look on over, over those uh, rooftops over there, if you see that pillar of smoke way, way, way off in the distance, that's the burning tower. We did that. <laughs> Taking care of business every day. <laughs> well, all right, a deal's a deal. Uh, so he hands you uh, a pouch filled with 30 silver pieces. Dude, we did better in the tower than we did You're still not there. You're the still tower. not in there. I know! This is like... Well, this, is, this, is like this is like a little annotation. Wait, Wait uh, silver, 30 well? silver. No, I am person. not a bean count. Is that right? Oh, is that per person? Talk, it ends in A. Trying to talk to the person who's in the room person? with me. Is that per person? 30 silver per person. I'm not here right uh, now. Just, <laughs> just leave a person. message after the beat. Sila, are you writing down the money? I was writing down just my personal money. Which is your personal? I thought he paid us one pouch. He did, but so I can write it. I can write it all down. I'll write it all the... Well, I was writing down. I have divided by three, okay, <laughs> so I'll um, write it down. All right, thirty silver pieces. Okay. Do I need a digital way for you guys to keep up with treasure? Because everyone writing on their stuff. There is, is a reason I am refusing no, like, to write down. We can't all be writing down numbers because 
they, they well, I'll, write, I'll write this down then. Just, many... just write down what you have personally. I can give you my, my promise. Like, like I'm not stealing anybody's money. Like, no, I mean, he's just handing us sacks of stuff that we have to divide up. So I'm just going to write down I have totals of our group stuff. In, yeah, I feel like, like we should keep we a group pool. And, and then, then I have my personal money. Yeah, and, when we came into this, we had money. Well, I mean, if you want to add the big chunks that he's given us to your chunks, It's not to fine. mine. It's just... added to the group number. Oh, I know. We'll I divide just... by three when we go shopping. Right. I was just going to, I didn't know if you wanted to have, if you want to have if you're writing down everything two, written down is what I'm saying. This is everyone's money right here. Yeah, he wrote stuff down okay. uh, last night. Well, you can write all this stuff down too if you want I to. I am. I was just saying that we, sh we should just have one person <laughs> doing it. This is why I'm not a bean counter. <laughs> okay. I just Bergamot, you are beans. welcome to write down all of the money. Um, <laughs> but, uh. I will not write it down. Well, I just want us to have the same numbers. Now, uh, he just gave us, um, he just gave us 30 pieces of silver. silver? Yep. Um, I think that might be a little short. We were promised, let's see, we were gone for how long? They, the, the job was uh, one silver piece per day while you're working on the job up to 10 days. I thought that was 10 days worth of rations. Okay. Nah. Well then. I don't count beans. I just eat them. Well, um, so, uh, thank you, Burger. Um, what, uh, what's been going on while we were gone? Nothing much. It's been pretty quiet since you left. No more complaints have come in, so I didn't know if maybe you guys had fixed something or if it just fixed it on its own self. Hmm. Um, well, we, uh, we are a little tired from this journey. Uh, we were really hoping to, uh, you know, rest just a bit in town. Uh, we would like to talk to you, uh, you know, looking for more work in the very near future, as soon as we can just, you know, uh, maybe stop into the, to the inn and get a nice meal and a nice rest. But we would like to come back and talk to you as soon as possible if you have any work for us. Well... I wouldn't have much more, but uh, there's uh, a couple different places in Fairyport that you could look. One would be the uh, Wanderers Guild. I mean, if you're looking to make money in this way. Is that where the Adventure Board is? No, that was actually South the Adventure Hollow Board is in the South Hollow Inn. That's right. Um, but the Wanderers are, are the Adventuring Guild in Fairyport. Um, yeah. And there's also uh, a guard named uh, Garamond. Uh, he works for Silas Monta, one of the guild masters of fairy board uh, he's a friend of mine and he always has some odd jobs popping up so he might be someone you might talk to in the future as well where does uh, he where work would... for again silas silas oh, monta where would we find this german um he's often at silas's estate if you go in town and ask anybody they know where he lives He's one of the most popular guild masters in town. But you don't know where he lives, Burger? Oh, he lives in the southwest side of town. Okay. Um, is there anybody else uh, that might um, might be uh, good leads for us to find some work? Those would be the two places I'd check for sure. Can you recommend um, any uh, any good? Uh, apothecaries or um, or any good armorer or blacksmiths that we could uh, swing by and maybe drop your name? All of my stuff comes straight from the the guardhouse, so I wouldn't know any guys, but... You guys, um, I'm from Fairyport. I might know a blacksmith or, you know, I'm, my parents owned a, mar a market shop, so, you know, there there's blacksmiths in that area, so, I mean... It's been a while since I've had to go there, but maybe, you know, maybe if I, uh, you know, say my family's name, we might get some deals on something. I lean out the door and say, thanks, Ada. I'm sorry. This is, this was <laughs> like, this was strategy. I'm sorry. Um, well, uh, I can't think of anything else Isn't to say Ada about. from Fairyport? <laughs> She is. Shouldn't Why we ask her we where we should ask go? Her? We are and such dummies. Yeah, I think she would know a lot of shops where we could maybe buy stuff. 
Um, I can't think of anything else to ask Berger. Um, if you know, silent you. Well, besides what else, whatever else he was going to give us, you said, and there's more, right? No. No, there's oh. <laughs> 10 silver per person. She's like, uh, Berger's like, uh, so good try, little one. <laughs> I swear I thought you said, and, before we started discussing who was raised. I don't think I did. No, no. Well, hey, Burger, you know, we're about to go out and catch a burger. You want to join us for lunch? I don't know if Burger wants to, you know, join all of us for lunch. It was was an idle offer. I didn't actually (laughs) expect him to take me along. Just trying to be nice. Burger's been really nice to us. Thanks, Burger. We're gonna go now. Okay. So, Ada, what kinds of places are around for us to go visit? Well, my parents own uh, own a cart at a, one of the local markets, so we could, you know, stop by there. Like, I mean, they have. They do produce, and my mom has some, like, herbal remedies, but um, we could do it there. I mean, there's, like, I used to spend a lot of time in the horse stables, so they have to have known a good blacksmith, you know, so... You actually do know one. Um, It's a man named Galfridus. With a name like that. That man. We'll go there. He'll he'll set us up, or you know, he'll uh, you know, work it out. He uh, he does a little bit of everything. Uh, he used to do the horseshoes for the the place that you worked. Mm-hmm. Um, but he he's also been known to take up some work with the city guard. Um, then there is uh, uh, Hafner's, which is a uh, general shop. It has quite a few different um, ales and spirits. Oh, well, you had us at ales. <laughs> I mean, uh, come on. And uh, Bergamot actually had found that place on his way through town. Um, the other thing that you guys uh, should think of, I don't know, are you going to uh, continue camping out outside the city, or are you going to take up residence at an inn? Or? I would love to go stay at an inn. I don't know about you two, but I have been sleeping outside for An inn would be nice. Lately. I mean, we would have to, I mean, we'd have to get Dodden into a building, but once we got him in a room, hopefully we could keep him, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I doubt he's ever been to a city, though, so I'm terrified, you know, we, somebody's got to keep be with him pretty much at all times. Like, he might just wander off, and, you know, all, all that it takes is him get on a boat, and he's just gone. So. Oh, does it have all the, where all the things yeah. are? Yes, yeah, so there's Let's quite a few things, uh, different places. They're not all mapped out, but there's a few labeled on there. Um, And for our viewers, I'll pop that up on the video too, so that way you guys can sort of explore the city and see what all they're looking at right now. Um, Oh, there's Silas Montes' estate. So, uh, let's start out with, um, right, you guys would be from his, from the guard tower, I think it was like a half a day to South Hollow. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a little map here that says spaces. Um, so it looks like five leagues. So five leagues would be 15 miles. So you can make from South Hollow to Ferryport in a day. Okay. Um, so you guys will be getting in at night. And uh, right when you come into Ferryport, Actually, through the South Gate, which you would be, would be the uh, the famous South Gate Inn is right there. Um, they're known to be uh, an open-minded uh, inn. It used to actually be much smaller, but about uh, two years ago, the uh, the Ferryport Seven, who are some of the famous heroes of Ferryport, 
uh, they always stayed there, which then made it a very popular place to be, and they've actually had to expand out to other buildings for sleeping accommodations. Okay. They might take a ragtag group like ours. Uh, they make most of their money on ragtag groups. <laughs> is that, is ragtag? That sounds like, like a great place. Yeah, ragtag sounds like, like some sort <clears throat> of musician crew. Like, I, if you guys decide to perform for some people, you guys can be ragtag. <laughs> is this a band name? Yeah, I think it works. All right, so, um... All right, so we're back. Well, you guys are about okay. to walk into a tavern. I don't think you should do a shot until maybe you actually buy one at a tavern. I thought this was drinking dungeon. Yes. Oh, I don't even have a shot glass in front of me, guys. What? Um, <laughs> I've had this so, board for like some time now. I know. Uh, so you guys walk in to the uh, South Gate Inn. What? Uh, <laughs> you guys walk into the South Gate Inn, and despite what the map says, it, you can close down the handout on your guys' screen. Um, it is bustling with people, with uh, merchant guards, with uh, local uh, local farmers, some other adventuring sorts. And there's a man behind the bar that you see right as you walk in. He has these, this huge mustache sideburn thing going on, uh, bushing out in all directions. Why does it keep going away? She's Sorry, trying I'm trying to zoom out so I can see bit. more of the building. Um, there we go. No, that's too small. Okay. And you guys are in the South Gate Inn. Woo! Well, well, I think, I think we drink. should get a drink. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so you walk up, see what drinks they have available. They've got um, uh, vodka from the east, uh, dwarven spirits, rum, lager, white mm. wine, elven wine, and of mm. course whiskey. As nice as all those sound, I'll probably just go with whiskey. Well, they have a very well, considering nice Zyla's already climbed behind the bar, <laughs> grab the bottle and, and pour it for us. Boring. Um, Bergamot, you notice that there. This is a bustling inn, but there's absolutely nobody in here playing any music. <gasps> and you got your fancy horn back. Well, as I. Uh, Clink down um, a copper or two for the uh, for the drink. I uh, I sidle up to the bar and uh, ask the uh, the bartender. Uh, well, first of all, uh, well, hey, my good man, what's your name? I'm Bergamot. Well, my name is Ron Ron Estrelli, owner of the Southgate Inn. Uh-huh. And you guys uh-huh. order your whiskey, and he pours them out. And how much does the whiskey cost? Um. Right. We'll say uh, eight copper pieces. Okay. Uh, for, like is that for Nashville each? prices? <laughs> yes. This is, this is the East, yes. so, this uh, east South Gate. But you guys, you guys all pull up chairs and you have, you know, your furry fondness. Uh, Ada, who who uh, looks like she's already worn out on you guys, and then two short elflings, and he says, "Well, uh, not that I try to judge my customers, but." You sure do look like a ragtag group. I'm gonna buy a shot for y'all. Alright. So. Awesome. Yep. Cheers. What does Dodden drink? Dwarven? Cheers to. Do you think Dwarven or? Or did uh, we just take four? He says, I'll drink whatever you drink. Cheers to a wonderful adventure ahead. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> To um, a beautiful night's rest tonight in a cozy bed. That's gonna be nice. Yep. Especially since you gave the, your bed roll up to that one. I know. I've been sleeping on the in a hammock, straight right? ground. Something like yeah. that. Um. So, are you gonna be entertaining the folks while we kind of go around and see what's happening here? Well, yeah. Um. So we. Um. Oh, I, I, I'm asking this uh, before. 
Bergamot starts speaking to uh, Ron anymore, we're paid up with our drinks because I, I don't want to pursue this conversation with Ron until we're all paid up. Right? I need to write down that I. Right, and like we're I feeling wanna, so good that we, we leave like bit. great tips yeah. for him yeah, because okay. we're just. I was just making sure that was that was my approach with Ron. I wanted to uh, charm him a little bit. Well, um, well, I want to uh, definitely pour out the charm, uh, use a little bit of charisma, and um, I'd like to convince Ron that uh, he needs he needs to employ me as a bard for the evenings for the next couple nights. Um, Musical entertainment. In exchange for simply uh, a room that uh, the four of us can share. Um, you know, we'll cover our meals and everything unless unless he needs more than just a bard. I think that's fair. Well, I might be able to do a few tricks myself. You know, I am quite the acrobat. What kind of tricks? <laughs> I think. Yeah, you're also pretty swift with it with those digits. Yep. Well, you'd have to employ me to find out. Wait, Ron's gonna have to do what? <laughs> wow. In Lila. Oh, I, I thought this um, was your first adventure. No, um, I, I'm so I can do Ron. Ron acrobat. says, "Well, young man." We could maybe use a little bit of music. I don't need any elfling tricks happening in my establishment. So, Ooh. good man, Ron. Good man. I've had him on the back. He goes, I'm willing to risk one night on you, play for a couple hours, entertain my patrons, and if you do a good job, uh, then maybe we can discuss a further contract. Well, uh, that sounds great, Ron. Uh, if you'll give me a chance just to freshen up and, uh, you know, have a, a bite and a drink, I can start right away. How do you freshen up? It's pulled out of You just comb. like shake your hair out? <laughs> shake, shake it out. Shake, shake it, it out. Shake it out. <laughs> Alright, well, uh, the dinner tonight is uh, mutton, mm. lettuce, and tomato. Mm. An um, MLT. It's, yeah, <laughs> MLT, uh, which is uh, four silver pieces for, for the plate each. Um, and I, I'm just tossing this out. Uh, for now, we, you know, we can also keep up with it off record. Um, I don't want to be micromanaging money uh, as we play. Um, Sorry, you said six silver? Yes. So, so you guys four, eat up. Four so silver. Four silver? Uh, yeah, sorry. Four <laughs> silver, yes. Um, you guys eat up, freshen up. Um, Bergamot starts performing. So uh, I, I've got Dottin's food. Give me, uh, Bergamot, give me a, a, a persuasion check. We'll, we'll use that for your singing. Um, but I get to use... Um, persuasion skill. Yeah. 19. Oh, plus, um, plus charisma? No, plus your persuasion skill. Like, whatever you roll plus the skill. Yeah, so uh, 19 plus 7. All right. Damn. Um, so, uh, do you want to describe how you, like, just quickly, like, how you get the crowd going or how you perform? Or how do you toot your horn? Well, actually, actually I, I'm, I'm feeling, you know, we've, we've just had an adventure, and so in true fashion, uh, I need to, to sit down and sing some, some ballad-style songs and really tell some stories. Uh, this, is, this is not high-energy music to start it out. This is actually good storytelling, people really listening, kind of enjoying this. This is almost like dinner theater is what's happening, and, and the folks here have never heard anything quite like this. And there's actually a lot of kind of nods and, and just a, a very silent meal going on this evening at the South Southgate Inn. All right. Um, so with with that role, we'll say that you put on a great show, and Ron offers you guys, um, if all of you want to stay, uh, one of his. Um, if you'll perform for. Uh, two hours a night and three hours on the busy night, which is the weekend. Um, he will give you guys free room and board in the secondary building in one of the nicer bed chambers there. Ooh, okay. Are we going to be here for like a week? 
um, well, it gives us the option to, to be yeah. there that long. Yeah. Um, I, that sounds good to me, Ron. I, can we expect a little bit of privacy? Do these doors lock at the least? You know, we're new in town. We, we don't oh, yeah. Like I said, it's one of the better rooms. Uh, there are four beds in it um, and a private changing area within the, within the room. That yeah. sounds great. But with the way that you got the crowd going tonight, I would say that that would be a good investment. Though it's not in the main building here, it's the one across the street. Are they just as uh, just as uh, as um, uh, is that just as much of an art going and music enjoying crowd at the uh, one across the street? Oh no, you'll be performing here, but you'll be okay. staying across the street. Oh, okay, well then, no problem. All right. Well. So you guys finish up the night. You have a good night's sleep in a bed. Mm -hmm. uh, in the morning, uh, Ron has sent up. I want to know what Dodden thinks of this, like. Is he, he just, just sitting um, there during the time? Does alcohol affect does uh does yeah. alcohol I mean, affect him? Affects him. Um but he uh seeing that you're just seeing from the scarf up, it's basically like, you know, a a, a cat in a wagon. You know, it's just like hmm. he's just taking it all in. I wanna like wagon. since we're like the same height, I wanna kinda like nudge him on the shoulder a tiny Dance bit and be him. like, How you doing, Todd? See if he'll like, how you doing? Whisper it in my ear through his scarf. Alright. Uh, he says, just <laughs> just trying to take it all in. I've never seen this many people in one place. <laughs> you guys will never guess what Don just said. <laughs> uh, I got pretty big ears, I heard. <laughs> um, so so after, Z after Zyla's picked on Don a bit. No, I'm, I tell Don, Zyla says, Don. I'm glad you're having a, a good time, and thanks for being part of our group. Kiss him, all right? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you kiss him. Oh man! I wasn't whispering sweet nothings in his ear. That's gonna be the uh, the drink and dungeon fan fiction of <laughs> the Zyla Todd and Romance. <laughs> They're gonna ship you guys together. Uh, uh, we know you like that goblin. It was. <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> um, so, anyways, you guys have a, a good night. Uh, Ron sends word up in the morning that there's a hot bath in the bath chamber for you guys. Um, Is that her name? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and now, where do you want to go next? Do you want to go to the Let's, Smith? Do you want to go to the Let's start with the Smith, general? because regardless, we're probably going to have to, like, it takes time for armor to be fortified and whatnot. So I feel like we should go to the Smith first so that they can start working on stuff while we, uh, you know, go to the market and, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Do they do leather armor there too, Ada? Uh, no, that'd be a, a leather worker. Yeah, I'm going to need to find a leather worker and maybe upgrade some leather Didn't you just armor. remember that the leather worker's next okay. door? I don't know where, the, I can't remember where the leather worker is. I thought you just remembered that you were sure that the leather worker was next door. <laughs> There's a map of Fairyport. It's just gone, like, so, we had um, to get we'll, rid of it. We will, oh, um... Look, I just found an easier way to, like, zoom in and out. That's so much easier than the way I've been zooming in and out. How have you been zooming in? I've been going over to this little bar over here, and it keeps um, disappearing. Like, it keeps disappearing when you're, like, trying to click it. Okay. All right, so, um... So as far as upgrading, um, upgrading like the leather armor, um, you could have some new armor made that would be masterwork that won't give you any bonuses. But then, um, mm. you could you could go from like leather armor to studded leather, which would give you another at addition to your AC. Um, but it costs twenty five gold. Is it for heavy a, for oh her gosh. too? No. upgrading my leather armor today maybe um what do you have that you could um trade in though i don't know i actually Can i want to find sell a sell your leather armor to them and buy the studded leather armor would be five gold pieces to, to sell back you probably got like of the variety of things that we have you probably could sell like some random things and at least get some money back 
maybe. I just. I guess so. What I, we should I, I want to find something that will, like a kit that will help me disguise. Make disguises. Okay. Um, <laughs> so most kits go for around. Uh, like. 30, 40, 50 gold pieces. Oh, jeez. So. Okay, well. I might just be... Then... What about just a makeup kit? Nothing. You can find that at the apothecary. Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> maybe it's... I'm trying to think of what would be a... Well, okay, well, at the least I need a bedroll. I definitely need a bedroll for future adventures. All right, so that's... That's just a couple gold pieces. Yeah. So, um, was there anything that you guys were looking for at the blacksmith? Mm, I was thinking about um, maybe trading in, trying to maybe trade in the um, the wooden armor. Um, that you made? Mm-hmm. Just because it's heavy and I don't really need it now that I got my scale armor back. Yeah, he has no use for tying together <laughs> pieces of wood. <laughs> None whatsoever. We could... We could strap it on dotted at some point. Well, it was custom made for me. Oh, I well, well, we could customize it too. by like chiseling off. We can whittle it down. It so like it seems like a lot of the stuff that you guys might want might take some saving up or maybe another job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I am interested in getting some sort of like spider venom antidote. Um, or, you know, I'm well, really interested in, into, like, potions and stuff. But at the blacksmith, I really don't have, like, anything that really I would fortify at all. So, well, so what I'll probably like, say, what we should do next time, before we go on an item mission, everyone should look at the money they have and pick up the book and see how much items are and see if it's even shopping. worth sort of visiting. Okay. Um, yeah, so I would, can they fortify can, weapons? Like, could they add stuff to weapons to make them stronger? No, that's not really. Like, do with that. Okay. Um, okay. There's in so, but there is something that you guys can do, um, if, along those lines of, like, some people can magically enhance weapons. You're not going to find them out in the open here because magic's not trusted. But you guys do have right. some items that that were glowing. Mm -hmm. I would love to find some sort of source of magic here. I really like, although I've like discovered magic in myself, like I don't really have contacts in Fairyport because it's something you don't talk about. I mean, like I've grown up here and it's somewhere, it's something you don't talk about. So we're going to have to figure out the right kind of way to like start out with finding, finding someone who can enchant our armor or, you know, teach us spells and stuff like that. Okay. So while well, we're here at the uh, blacksmith, um, could I uh, try and like maybe at the least sell some things? Sure. What do you want to sell? Um, well, I just have like a few random weapon things that I don't think we're using anymore. I have um, a short bow. Um, I have the insect dagger. I want that insect dagger. Okay. I thought you said you didn't want that. Anymore. Well, I gave it to you because you had nothing else. Okay. Well then, write that down. That's in your inventory now. Um, does anybody want that short bow? Because I might as well just sell it. I already have one, and I have an, a, a marnium dagger, which I think I got from. Yeah, you yeah, have that the glowed when yeah. they cast magic. It glowed, you have so the dagger, and I dagger. have the sword. Right? <coughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I'm not selling that. But um, how much? Uh, how much uh, will the blacksmith give me for the short bow? Uh, the short bow, he'll give you. Uh, Market price resale, 15 gold pieces. 15 gold? Um, and neither of y'all need that short bow? Nope. All right, I'm going to take that 15 gold. Take out um, your um, I'm going to. Okay. Um, so I'm taking that. Um, and then um, I don't think I need the wooden armor anymore because it was heavier than my current armor, and it actually had a lower armor class. Yeah, so I can't see desperate. any reason to keep it other than it looks really boss. I mean, it was made by, by yours truly. I mean, it's it's a priceless 
And so hopefully... We should just, like, go to the edge of town and start up a little bonfire and take a moment to appreciate the wooden armor and, like, burn it. Oh, so just so you guys know, not that any of you have money for this, but masterwork items um, are created with superior materials and craftsmanship. A masterwork item grants plus two to any roll using the item. Um, this does not apply to damage, though, so it would be to hit. Yeah. Um, but the cost for a masterwork item is quadruple the listed cost. So, Ooh, yeah. um, so it, like you could get masterwork leather armor that give you a plus one, but it would cost 40 gold pieces instead of 10 gold pieces. Okay. Whew. Well, do you want to head to... Wait, uh, wait what do you I'm mean? still trying. Okay. Um, so, um, you said uh, 15 for the short bow? Mm-hmm. All right. Then um, the wooden armor, um, would I, would this, um, would I sell this to the blacksmith or should I... Um, there's uh, like another uh, armorer in town that would be more likely to. Uh, I'll just say it, it, it'd be about the same as someone bringing in a bunch of stuff that they had tied together with like yarn and all right, well, and stuff. It, am, it's a keepsake for you if you want it, but no one would probably pay for it. I am going to do my best to use my charisma to try and convince him that this is handmade armor of the most up and coming yet most fascinating bard this side of. I Alder. will give you ten copper pieces for firewood for it. Can't like persuade you at all. I, yeah, I can't try and like convince okay, you. Okay, you can try. Like, I mean, you are trying to sell ice <laughs> to an Eskimo here. Like, I mean, it really Do is it. not armor. Do it. Sell ice. Nope. <laughs> nope. That is. Uh, um, where's my thing? Uh, Thirteen. Woo. Yeah. No, he does <laughs> not want it. Besides, for firewood. He's all like, right. but well, really. Then, uh, this is birchwood or whatever wood we ended up using. <laughs> He's like, my fur touched the inside of this. <laughs> if you know what I, it's. Yeah. <laughs> Um, My essence is all over the inside of this armor. I would like to point out that it does have a whiff of butterscotch to it, but I will take the ten copper, sir. <laughs> <laughs> all right. He buys it, throws right. it on top of the rest of his firewood. All right. <laughs> and so ends a... Uh... I do not think I have anything else to sell this man. Um, so ends the legacy of the wooden armor. Can we all it was take such a, a good moment story. of silence? I know. That needs to be a, a song that Bergamot writes for next time. <laughs> well, no, see, the thing is, as we... How he lost as, his wood. No, see, so... <laughs> oh. See, so Ada's sitting there talking about that as we're, like, turning around to, like, leave the store, and she, like, she says that to Bergamot, and then we turn around, and, and there's the shopkeeper putting it on the fire, literally, like, getting there. No. He's like, what? <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh. Okay. All right, bye-bye, so wooden armor. Have any potions, even though she doesn't use, I mean, I guess anyone can use a potion, right? Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we are moving on to the um, apothecary, or are we going to another type of store? Well, Hafner's going to have Hafner's. quite a bit of stuff. Let's go to Hafner. Hafner. Let's go. I'd love to meet the Hafners. Let's go there. I've been there once before. Oh, Charming Ooh, folks. Ooh, wait. It just, okay, guys. We Ooh. just entered the Hafner store. Whoa. Oh, oh. look. Awesome. I like them already. Look at all that stuff on those counters. Can we get it bigger out there? There's like there's just something oh. about those hats. There's I feel like boots. I've known them. There's for a while. boots and hats and teddy bears on this. <laughs> Look, there's a teddy bear. Yeah, a lot of purses. Yeah, they're right. not kidding so, on um, the purses. The the Hafner's name, uh, it's uh, Mart and Pala. Yeah. Uh, Hafner. Um, Pala's the the guy. No, Paula <laughs> is the lady. And Bart is the girl. Woo! Um, uh, Paula has uh, long, dyed pink hair that she keeps in braids. Mm. What's she um, dye it with? Like... Magic. Uh, plenty... Roses? Or, um, well, like, she, beetles? Or... She is an herbalist, and um, 
You're from Fairyport. Give me a knowledge check. Boom. Nope. Eight plus. I've got like an eleven. So there were whispers in the market because this is on the edge. This is actually on Market Street. Their building okay. is right outside of um, the main market. Okay. And uh, there were whispers about her having because. It's not that old of a shop. It's only been around for um, a few years. But some people say that she once ran into a bit of trouble um, for having used magic. My kind of gal. Okay. Nice. So, um, what about, is it, it's Mart? Mart, yes. What about Mart? Um, all that you know of him is that he has been a... Uh, pretty well-known shopkeeper. Okay, well, I'm gonna go up to um, this mystical woman and talk to her about, you know, just start trying to kind of feel it out whether I can speak to her openly about magic or if I need to like be more, you know. Um, so talk. when you guys come in, uh, Mart is behind the table and he's writing in a ledger, and he looks up and, and waves at you. Um, and uh, uh, Paula is is spreading out different uh, herbs on the table in front of her and mm. sort of organizing them into different rows. Does she have bergamot? Mm. Never mind. Bergamot the herb? Yeah, the herb. We don't know if that exists in this world. Okay. I'm going to oh. go over there and just kind of ask her. Um, I'll be like, so what do you have for a spider bite? Because I've got kind of a, it's not an afflicted wound, but it's still there. So I would like to know what she has as far as fear potions as well, if there's such a thing. Um, she says, I don't have anything for, for fear. That would be... What's her voice? A little too supernatural. That's her voice? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm not gonna try. I can't stand uh, <laughs> audiobooks where the, the deep voice guy tries to do a high pitch. Come on! Woman <laughs> voice. No, it's it's awful. Okay. Um, but she does have stuff for bites. Uh, so she brings you over to a shelf, mm -hmm. and uh, and there she has a couple different uh, salves, uh, antitoxin salves, and um, she says they're. They're a little expensive because it's sort of hard to come by some of these herbs. Um, it's 12 gold pieces per bottle. Ooh. Is it worth having something to put on that spider bite? How many uh, doses do you get per bottle? Yeah. How many doses uh, would you... It'd be three. About um, three, depending on the size of the spider, you know. Yeah. I don't know. I would say unless you think it's going to start festering. Like, I mean, you well, have like issues to have on hand. So like, far, right? I'm not gonna use it on this, but to have it on hand, I mean, obviously, we're probably gonna run into more spiders. What so, if we did get a spider bite thing, like, how much would it help? I'm asking you as the GM. Uh, well, uh, Paula can answer that. She's she says that um, that the salves, if you put it on right after the bite happens, um, it can stop any secondary. Infections or, or poisonous. Okay. Um, it's like the healing, but it, it, it doesn't heal you no. at all. It just basically breaks the fortitude type mm -hmm. rules. Okay. Um. Well, I'm gonna go ahead. You said what about how many? Twelve. Oscar, she has some spider repellent. As she's walking by, Bergamot, she looks down and she goes, "Oh, well, that's a nice sword you have there." Oh, and she's got a matching dagger. Those are both very interesting. And she sits down behind the the counter and starts sorting. You guys have a matching sort of sword and dagger? Where was I? It's the Amarnium one. Oh, yeah. We actually acquired these on our last um, trip into the forest. What, what you want to touch it? What could you tell us about these? Would I you like to see it. them closer? She wants to touch it. She wants to look uh, at it. She sort of... Uh, purses her lips a little bit, sort of smiling and sort of giving you a scolding look and saying, well, bless you ladies for traveling with this one. Um, sure, I'll take a look at your swords. I might not touch it, though. Okay, 
what does she have to say about it? Um, so she's, she's looking at them and putting her hands uh, over them. And then she looks at Ada and says, so what do you think of these swords? tell like good and bad magic or anything like that. I guess you said magic is kind of based off of the holder, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know the history of these swords, but they definitely give off an energy, is what I tell her. An energy, you say? Anything else around here that you notice that has energy? Do a check. And Mark, Mark quietly stands up pushes up his glasses, walks over, and locks the door. And he's, he just says, I feel like this should just be a more private conversation. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, they're <laughs> locking us in. They're going to, we can't fight anything else right now. Okay. Um, Do I detect magic? Well, like, what, detect magic? I guess, um, deck. Because, because um, then she's, you're going to demonstrate to her that you know magic, but then you're also going to answer her question by yeah. telling her what she wants yeah, to see. Yeah, I guess I'll detect magic on, like, towards her? To the room. The room? <laughs> <laughs> no magic in here! Once again, guys. luckily you don't have to roll for detect magic. It's really? just a casting of a spell. Oh, Because no. that would have been the... Good, <laughs> good, I'm glad, because that was embarrassing. Okay. Um, so yeah. So you do that, and the sword and the dagger glow, as well as the pouches that you have that yeah. have the stones. And she goes, "What oh. about Vic's pouches?" Or are she those goes, gone? "What? Oh, those are gone. No, those are those okay. are long. You can still be wearing them, but there's nothing there." Yeah. She goes, "Oh, that's that's very interesting. And what are those? What is that green glowing that you guys have in your pouches?" Is, is Dodden's necklace and staff Wait, glowing too? He's not with you guys, is he? Did I we just he leave him locked up? I assume that you wouldn't be going all the okay, time. Yeah, I guess he's, he's, he's in the room. locked. Well, we are we gonna leave him alone? I guess we left him alone. Fuck, Dotted. He's fine. I don't think they're gonna go in and clean the room or anything, right? We're gonna give him something like I I the him. equivalent to like you know. I taught him solitaire. Pack. Yeah, like yeah, exactly. Give him a deck of cards and you know, so he he's can just good. sit there and play him. Okay. Um, where were we? She asks about glowing pouches. Yeah. The, so, so I pull up my green gem for her to see. Um, and she she takes it out of your hand. She goes, "Oh, these these are really interesting." So she sets yours down there, and then she says, "Uh, young lady, what's your name?" Ada. Ada, give me your hands. And you put your hands in hers, and she puts it over, and she goes. This will be more informative, and uh, give me a spellcraft check. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. All right. Um, as you're running your hands over, you feel an energy pass through her hands and your hands, and the swords glow again but much more brightly. Uh, in fact, you look at everyone else to see if they seem, but there, there's nothing registering in their eyes. Mm -hmm. And when you look back, it's almost like a thought in your head of what these are. And uh, so you, you have learned the identify spell. Identify? Um, yeah, you lose one mana for casting this right now. Okay, but, I lose it right now? Yep. Yeah. Can he learn? Yeah, he can learn it. Okay. What did you roll, Anton? Bergamot. Um, I got so 13. I, That's not enough. What nope. did you just say it was? But but Paula saw you saw you interesting. She winks at you. She goes, you're next. Um, so the sword, the Amarnium sword, uh, is, yes, identify spell. Um, the Amarnium sword is a plus one sword. So it gives you plus one to hit, plus one damage when someone uses it. Plus one to hit and plus one damage? Yep. Um, so then she walks so over and grabs your hands, Bergamot, 
and places your hand over the stone. And she says, close, uh, she, or she says, watch me and concentrate. And so now roll another spellcraft check. Uh, 15. 15? All right. Uh, you learn identify as well. Ooh. Uh, the energy passes through, and the stone glows extremely brightly to you. And you, Ada, you see uh, Bergamot's eyes look around, and you notice that the stone is not glowing, so only the person casting is the person that sees the glow. Mm. Um, and Bergamot, the stones, you realize, are... Um, like I said, this isn't like... It, it, you're. It's sort of like getting an idea of what it is, but not completely. Um, but these are like spell stones. Um, and they can... Uh, sorry, I'm scrolling up to find it. The exact description. Man, this is intense. So I, we're so going to have to fill Zyla. A, a spell stone... A spell stone can store up to five mana worth of spells as spell memory and hold one mana. Wow. A wild or a bard can store spells up to the equivalent of five mana from their memory in the stone to free up spell memory for other spells. They can be swapped with the spells in memory as a standard action. And a spellcaster can infuse the stone with mana by spending two hours in meditation in the equivalent mana. So that means that these are like little mana batteries that on a day yes. off you can put it in and it's one backup mana. But more importantly for you two... So do I need to try to like... I probably need to try to convince like to try to get this like at least your stone. Mm -hmm. Or can she use the stone? Can no. she use... Okay. So I might be convinced if she, I get those two other stones that Bergamot has. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I might be convinced. So, um, the thing is, is what that does with the spell memory is, you know, you guys only have a certain amount of spell memory now. So yeah. if you see another spell that's happening, we and you don't have spell memory, you can't do it on the fly. So, like, if you have a utility spell, like maybe identify, you could store that in the stone, and then, because okay, so it, it only takes a, a six second action to pull it out of the stone. So out of combat, you could pull it out, use it, and then put it back huh. to keep your spell memory open for learning other spells. So what it does is it just expands a little bit the amount of spells that you guys can learn. And this is per stone, and they do stack. So one of you could have two stones, one has another. And you can trade them too. So like, let's say Ada needs a, a an extra mana in the middle of battle because of where she's at, you could actually throw the stone to her, she could catch it, and then, of course, I'd probably say it's a heroic action to throw and catch during battle, but that's a whole other thing. Um, so anyways, these are, these are little... Uh, that's uh, exciting! Woo! Things for you oh, guys. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, and then after uh, Paula is done casting with Bergamot, she looks at Xyla, and she goes, Oh, hon, you don't have the gift to you. It's okay, they'll take care of you. <laughs> Here, um, here's some herbal tea. <laughs> and then uh, so she, she knows that I asked for beer potions still, right? Does she remember? No, she told you in the very beginning when you asked for it that there's no such thing as. Oh, I thought she was just saying that because she was like, no. that would be a magic implied. Um, yeah. You have to like and then, and like. Yeah. <laughs> so then Paula invites both you guys to cast over the dagger as well, like to test out your, your new abilities. Uh, hell yeah. Um, I'm going to do the one that glows like on the screen. And plus spell cast. Once again, you don't have to. Like, you're not oh. learning it. Oh, Identify, right. you just cast. But oh. She's just seeing you cast it. Oh. So both you guys cast over it, and the, it glows to both of you. And um, the dagger is also plus one to hit and plus one damage. Okay. Uh, for, can it be for her though yeah. too? Okay. Anyone can use the magic items. Okay. But only you guys can use. Understand what it is. Yes. Okay. Um. Awesome. Cool. Do you guys think I should still? I feel like I should have some spider. Um, 
Now, then Paula, Paula gets a very serious look on her face. And she says, Now, I felt a connection with you three. Which is why I just felt compelled to open up. I am not sure I keep my practice very secret. Mm -hmm. And I hope that you will as well. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to have to... You have taught regret us... Regret my decision. Yeah. You have taught us so much just in this moment. Like, we learned so much about stuff that we were just carrying haphazardly. Like, like it was nothing. I um, give her a matching set of spider fangs. Ooh. Nice ones. She okay. thanks you for them. Nice. No, and she sits back in her chair and she goes, well, and honestly... This town's so dull. So, when you walked in, I just decided to take a chance because a motley-looking crew like you, I figured, how could it go wrong? <laughs> uh, Mart puts down his pen, stands up, goes and locks the door, and then comes back around, sits back down, and starts writing again. Okay. Is there anything else? Now, from... she goes, you wouldn't be interested in selling these stones, would you? No, not right now. No, but um, I would like you to take a look at these other two. They're not, we don't believe they're magical, but perhaps uh, you might see some, some significance in them. Uh, okay. We have a moss agate and a piece of amethyst here. She says those would make some nice tokens for somebody. Uh, I'd give you a total of 60 gold pieces for both of them. 60 gold. <gasps> 60 gold pieces. That's shiny. That's a lot of shiny. That's why she won't offer us so much for them, though. Gems sell for a lot. Yeah. I mean, gems. Those. Yeah, it's crazy. Like gems have more of a value. Those small-minded nobles over from the nobles' quarter will pay anything for something that makes them more beautiful and desirable. Well, see, Bergamot sort of had a little bit of an inkling about that amethyst because his family, you know, being uh, into shiny stuff themselves, you know, their money, they're into money. So he knew that that amethyst had that. And I think that, like, that's the kind of thing that it, uh, it doesn't take anything from us to carry it around, but it's got to have some value. The Moss Act, to me, I'd probably be willing to be rid of, but I feel like that amethyst might be worth something to somebody someday. Okay. I mean, if you want to sell it, that's fine. I don't need to sell either, but I'd be will I'd be much more willing to sell the agate than the amethyst. Uh, Zyla, while you're standing there, they're talking about that. You look over on Mart's desk, and you see that there's a tiny stuffed shrew that's on a little pedestal right <laughs> next to his bed that he's writing on. <laughs> a little shrew. How what? much for that, Mart? He looks up, he goes, so pushes up his glasses, he goes, that's not for sale. <gasps> it goes back to writing. Oh! What's its name? Uh, I like to call him Dead. Dead? Yeah, with no A, just D-E-D. -E. Dead. Yep. Okay. Dead true. He almost bested me, but I got him. That's true. Dead true. All right, is there anything else we need from um, the general store? We definitely are going to be returning here. Well, I mean, Paula says that she has some um, healing poultices that she can sell you. That would be great. Um, what are what is it? Normally, they're about twenty gold pieces each, but she do eight gold pieces for your first purchase. You know, first customers and all. Yeah. First time customers. We will be returning customers. So, um, and what like the healing selves? Like, how effective are they? Uh, in gaming terms, they heal uh, 1d4 plus 2. Plus 2. Um, I would love to purchase some. Um, you said 8, eight each. Mm -hmm. Can I buy 2? Sure. So. There's also a wide assortment of uh, beers and even a couple liquors that all have a uh, uh, label on them that has a shrew painted on it. Okay. Nice. Well, um... Uh, let me get the uh, permission from the group here, but um, I that was uh, eight gold pieces for those. Yeah. Each. Um, what was it? One D. One D four. 
1d4 plus 2. So, um, if, um, if none of us are attached to the moss agate, um, I'd like to try and trade her that for two more of these. Um, yeah, these I'd like to, yeah. I would like and I'd to like to save one that one amethyst, two. though. I think that might be more valuable yeah. to a different person. But, like, maybe either of you. I mean, I, I would definitely want one of those. I've got two of the healing well, yeah, they're for us. Yeah. So they're for the group no matter what. So, um, hey, uh, Pala, would, uh, is it Pala or, how do you spell it? Um, it's P A L L A. That's what I thought. That's what I wrote down Pala. when you said it. Hey, Pala, uh, I noticed that, uh, or I remember you said you were interested in this moss agate. Could I trade you this moss agate for two more of those little uh, healing spells? Um, oh, sure. I'll right. trade two for that. A little above market value for that agate, but. We're all friends here, right? Absolutely. I can, I can throw in a matching set of goblin teeth. Well, now that's interesting. But How about I trade you a couple of these uh, homemade biscuits I made for for those goblin teeth? Well, I'll tell you what. You take your pick of the best set, of match set of goblin teeth, and then uh, we'll, we'll have some biscuits. All right. Is there gravy? Uh, no, but I would say... Uh, just to be careful, I'm trying to only eat one of those biscuits at a time. How many biscuits come in the pack? <laughs> it's special Two. biscuits. Two biscuits? Yeah. Well, it's um, a special home home brew of the, I'm, of the biscuits. Uh, I'm going to hold both the biscuits, but I'm giving you one of the uh, healing spells, right? right? Yeah, but it's, a, it's a potion, right? It's a healing potion. Yeah. A salve, actually. Salve. It's not a, salve. You, it, so what it is is you don't drink it, you'll actually spread it onto the wound. And so that's it takes one standard action for folks to tax of opportunity when you use it. Okay. Okay, I'm ready to go. One healing spell. And that does 1d4 plus 2. Yep. Awesome. You got the biscuits? Two biscuits. Two biscuits. All right. Is there anything else? Um, I guess. Um, I'm gonna ask the, both of them. Like, is there anything else going on through town? Um, oh, I have one more question to ask her for sure. Okay. Um, hey, so um, we have this crazy kooky scroll that we found in the. Uh, yeah, it was in the um, the same room that my horn was in. Oh yeah. And the gems and everything we were in. Um, it it was um, it was like in the hoard stash of the chieftain of some uh, dirty stinking gramblins that we just fought. Uh, now, I'm sorry to say that the, that those uh, match set of uh, gramblin teeth that you just picked out are not the chieftain's teeth. Uh, he got away, but we did get a bunch of his stuff, and uh, the scroll was in there. Do we, Does this look like anything to you? She waves a hand over it and it glows a little bit, and she says, this is indeed magic, but I don't recognize the language it is written in. Can you tell us, um, does any part of it look familiar to you as far as the paper, the, uh, the, the ink? If the I had to guess, seeing the other artifacts you brought in, I'd probably say that it's written in Elvish. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Awesome. Um, I guess I will um, probably wrap that up with asking just is there anything else going on through Perry, Ferryport that um, uh, we need to know or do you recommend any people who would also be um, friends to those of the same uh, energy as Burma? Paula says you know, it's, it's been a hard time making friends here in Fairyport, so I don't know who else okay. that you can talk to. Now, um, there is rumor that Silas Manta has a druid that works under, under him. I don't know if he's a real druid or if that's just some name that he's given to himself to give himself some clout, but I have not met him yet. We don't have any cabbages left or anything? No, no you gave all those to yeah. okay. 
Cars in the burger. I have a few potatoes in my pocket. Ooh, pocket potatoes. Pocket taters. I asked Pala if she might be interested in some potatoes. So much. She was so gracious to us. He can flavor them, them like butter, too. So. Uh, flavor them like anything. She says, uh, those look like they're pretty dear to you, sweetie, so you can just keep those. <laughs> Okay. And with as tiny and skinny as you are, maybe you should eat up <laughs> on a little bit. All right. The, well, the elvish dilemma of do I eat the potatoes now or do I save them and turn them into elvish wine? Mm. Uh, hey, uh, speaking of wine and good times, um, uh, Mart and Pal Pala, would uh, either of y'all like to come here? Best damn bard in town, singing this evening only at the Southgate Inn. This evening and, and lighting <laughs> seven more evenings to come. <laughs> I'm hyping up the show. Okay. Gosh. Uh, no wonder your shows don't sell out. Mark, Mark perks up at that and says, "You know, I have a delivery that I have to make to the Southgate Inn. We could do that tonight." Apollo says, "That sounds delightful. We'll be there." Awesome. Oh, that's cool. the best reaction we've gotten out of Mark all day. And uh. <laughs> And so, uh, Mart asks what time you're going on, and so you say, like, a little bit after sunset, and, uh, and he says, we'll be there. And so then we'll just go ahead and jump forward while you're singing, right on time. I mean, like, the minute it's sundown, yep. Mart and Paula are there. And yep. they, they just somehow managed to find the front row table, of course. Yes. Not managed, yeah. No, I mean, he brought no, a keg of their, stuff over. No, he walks they up and they're like, him. here's yeah. your normal table, man. Like, that is Mark's I'm table. just saying, if they had, like, let's say that Does there's a travel? character sheet or something, it travel? would say punctual as a, a talent for each of them. Okay. <laughs> um. Does he travel with this, sh like, shrew that's not for sale, or? No. Okay. No, that's just his little, on his desk. Okay. Well, all right. Well, you'll have right. to... Devote or uh, you know, give a song to them. Oh yeah, it's definitely um, it's in a very aggressive. Um, what I did was I found a very uh, weighty um, piece of iron that I'm using as an instrument, and I'm like, this is heavy metal, y'all. <laughs> it's just for them. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. That's good. Thanks. Okay. All right. So I think we'll wrap that up. Yeah. Uh, that was Got awesome. some good trading going on. We learned some things. Didn't die. Didn't die, and uh, luckily your rolls didn't count. So and we uh, made some new friends. Yeah. Woo! All right. Awesome. Well, we'll wrap it up. Thanks everyone for joining us. Yep. Woo! Woo!